friends, we're back. We're talking about centroids. We're talking about the method of composite shapes, okay? We remember our centroid equation that we talked about before, which is x bar is equal to the sum of the x sub i, a sub i, divided by the sum of a sub i. I'm going to show you what that means and how we use it. Also, y bar sum of y sub i a sub i divided by the sum of a sub i. And of course, this a here can be substituted with volume, weight, mass, length, pressure, all kinds of things, okay? But in this particular case, we're working 2D area problems, and let's see if we can use this, and I'll show you what this means, what these little sub i's mean, and what all that means when we solve this problem, okay? Let's start with this guy over here. <clears throat> now, for both problems, we're going to find x bar and y bar for the given shapes, okay? So we'll start with this guy, and we're going to need our textbook, okay? All right, so we're going we're gonna to flip up on our textbook to the very back cover, okay? I'm going to come up here close to you. This is the centroid table, the, the composite shape table, okay? It's the uh, geometric property and line of, uh, of line and area elements, okay? This is what you need, okay, for this, for this particular part. Now, problem number one, what is that? Well, uh, a pentagon? Um, I don't know. My students call that a, not a pentagon, doesn't have five sides. Well, it does. One, two, three, four, five, yes. My students call that the house shape, right? So, do we see the house shape on this table somewhere? The answer is no, it's not there. But you know what is there? Rectangles and triangles, okay? So what we can do is this. We'll subdivide this into two pieces, and we'll call this piece number one, and we'll call that piece number two, okay? So, how are we gonna do this? We're gonna use this equation here to find x bar and y bar. Now I'm gonna start off with x bar, okay? And think about it like this. X bar is the point where I would slide my finger up and down this shape in the X direction. And where would that shape balance on the end of my finger? What's, what, what's, the, what's the point? Go. Did any of you say five? Five is not the correct answer, okay? Because if you had a map, right, or, or, or you know, a, a coordinate system laid out, and I said, go to five comma two, what would you do? That's just like, well, I'd go over five and up two, but from where, okay? All coordinates are always re referenced from the origin, okay? And in this case, the origin is here, okay? So in the x direction, I would balance this on my finger right there. And so what would the x value be at that point? It's zero. So x bar, let's just do it for this shape, x bar for this shape is equal to zero by observation. Okay. Now, number two, the next thing is, is I want you to tell me where y bar is. Okay. I want you to guess somewhere in here, where would you put your finger? What's the number that you would put your finger in the y direction to balance that shape on the end of your finger? And this is important, right? Because you should have kind of an idea of the, the ballpark that the number is in, right? Because if I solve this and I get like 17, I'm going to be like, wait, 17 is up here. It's not even on the part. That doesn't make any sense, right? It doesn't make any sense that it would be like right there. It doesn't make any sense it would be like below half of the rectangle. It would flip over, right? Because, so what's the number? You know, between 6 and 8 maybe, somewhere in that neighborhood? I don't know. Well, let's see if we can find it. Okay? So we're going to use this equation right here. Okay? And what this means is, what that little I means is the number of parts to your composite shape. When we say the method of composite shapes, composite means it's built up of a lot of different piece parts. So for this whole thing here, it's built of two pieces. So I'm going to expand this equation here, and it looks like this. It looks like this. Y1, A1, plus Y2, A2, divided by A1, plus A2, okay? This is just a short way to write that. Now, if I had a part that had like seven parts or eight parts to it, then this equation would be much, much longer, right? So this means sum up all the y times the a's, and then on the bottom, sum up all the areas. That's all it means. 
So let's see if we can put the right things in this equation and find what y bar is equal to. Okay? So we'll start off with this. Y bar for piece number one. Where is the middle? And if something that helps you is like put a dot. I'm going to put a red dot where I think the middle is. Okay, I think it's right there. And I think for this one it's like right there. Okay? So all I'm asking you is where's the dot, right? In the y direction. So for a rectangle, it's half, isn't it? So it's 5 times the area of piece number 1. Well, it's just 10 by 10. That's 100. Okay. What's next? Y2. What is y bar for shape number 2? Okay, we're going to need our table for this. Okay, so I got my handy dandy book here. I go over to the back page. Okay. And down here at the bottom is triangles. Okay. And if you look at that triangle there, it says that the centroid is at one third of the height on the triangle. Okay. One third the height. So the height is six. So this distance here is two. Okay. It's one third the height. So y bar for shape number two. Now a lot of students would say, okay, it's two. Let's go back. Measured from where? Oh, from the origin. So I got to go 10 to get up to here and then 2. So the answer is 12. Okay. And then what's the area of a triangle? 1 half base times height. The base is 10. The height is 6. That's 60 divided by 2. That is 30. Okay. Plus 30. So y bar is equal to... 500, this is 500, that's 360, that's 860, divided by 130, um, what is that, on, on that gum you, 86 divided by 13 is 6.62, okay, so that's about where we guess, we guess somewhere between Six and eight, right? So that's a good answer. I like that. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. So Y bar for this shape, 6.62 inches. So there's my location of the centroid for this guy. At zero, and positive, so six is somewhere in like in there, right? So if I put my finger at that point, that shape would balance on the end of my finger. Okay? Let's try the next one. Okay, what do we have here? We have a quarter of a circle with a square cut out of it. Okay, here's the y axis and the x axis. And we're asked to find the centroid of that. So just looking at it, what jumps out at you? What do you see there? You know what? Let me draw some eyeballs for you. If I look at it like this, okay, what do you see? Well, okay, what if you look at it like this? What do you see? You know, if I look at it from either one of those places, I see the exact same thing. So what does that mean? Well, off the bat, I can tell you that X bar is going to be equal to Y bar by observation, right? The centroid in this direction and the centroid in that direction are the same. It's a symmetric part about that axis, okay? So we, can only, we only need to find one of those things. So... I'm going to show you a different way. You want to, you want to find the X bar or Y bar? Hmm, we found Y bar last time. Let's find X bar. Okay. So X bar is the sum of the XA's over the sum of the A's. Okay. Now this, we got two pieces. Piece number one, piece number two. Okay. So piece number one is the square that's not really there. And piece number two is the uh, whole quarter circle. So we're going to have the whole quarter circle and then we'll subtract away the square. And here's, how, here's an easy way to do that. So instead of having that equation that's written out long form, I'm going to teach you this, which I call the table method. Okay? And it's just a way, it's like a, it's like a bookkeeping method to keep you from uh, making a mistake. So we've divided it into two parts, piece number one, piece number two. Okay? And here's what I've got. I've got X, A, and X, A. Okay, so all I got to do is fill this table in and not screw it up, okay? So piece number one, what is X bar for piece number one, okay? X bar for piece number one, it's a square, so it's half, it's, it's four, isn't it? Okay, 
What is the area of piece number one? Did you say 64? It's wrong. Wait, what? Is that area really there? Oh, no, it's not. So it's minus 64, which this is minus 256. Okay. What is x bar for piece number two? Now, again, we're going to need our table in our book here. Okay. Now we come over here. Now, here's a common mistake. There's two boxes. There's one here and there's one here. And they both have quarter circles in them. One is right. One is not right. Okay. You read the box. This one says quarter and semicircular arc. And this one says quarter and semicircular areas. What do we have there? That's an area. Okay. So we want the one over here. And it says that x bar is 4r over 3 pi. Okay. So the location of that centroid, which is like right there, right, in the x direction, that's x bar, is 4r over 3 pi. Okay? So let's see, r is, uh, what is r? 16, right? All right, so we're going to have to put that in there. So 4 times 16 equals divided by 3 equals divided by pi equals 6.79. Okay, what about the area? Oh, well, the area, it's a quarter of a circle. So it's pi, pi times r squared. 16 uh, squared is uh, 256 pi, which is uh, 804.24. Oh, I just did pi r squared, but then I got to divide that by 4, don't I? Dad, gum it. 201.1. And then 201.1 times 6.79 is equal to 1365.2. Okay, so what do we have here? We need the sum of the xA's over the sum of the a's. Where are we going to get the sum of the a's from? Oh, I got it. We could just add up all of the a's. So 201.1 minus 64 is 137.1. And then the sum of the xA's, right, we could get that right there, 1365.2 minus 256 equals 1109.2. Okay, now how easy is this going to be? Well, here it is, 1109.2 divided by 137.1 equals, divided by 137.1 equals, 8.09, and that is uh, inches, okay? So here's the deal. This is super easy to do. The bookkeeping is easy. However, if you put garbage in this table, guess what you will get out of it? Garbage, right? We didn't mess up. This is the right answer. We did not get garbage, but it's super easy to mess it up. One sign, screwed up. One wrong number from your, your uh, X bar, Y bar, all messed up. So be super careful what you put in your table because it's easy to get it wrong. There's two little intro introduction examples. Well, let's work a harder one.